Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a quick video showing you how to use Live Reload with Ionic Capacitor and React. Please make sure you like and subscribe and give the thumbs up for the video. We're just going to start with the basic React application, the blank template we are going to use here. And um, what I'm going to show you is how to use Capacitor with Live Reload and then how to debug your application also because I've seen a couple of people ask about that. So here's the basic startup. Um, I've kind of cut out the weight that you normally get when you uh, fire up one of these projects. So if you see a little bit of a, a kind of a blip in the video, that's what that is all about. But here, he, these are really just the basic steps. So we've um, started the project. Now we've changed it to the directory. We've done the npm install. And um, now it's time to just build the project. You need to get that build directory in place initially so that capacitor can work properly. So we've got the build directory. Eh, we have the build directory in place, and now we're going to do the Ionic Cap Sync iOS. The Cap Sync iOS will move over all the web resources, and then it'll also make sure that all the plugins and the necessary binaries get moved to the proper place. Next up, we want to do the Ionic uh, Cap Run iOS with the uh, Live Reload and the external flag set. That's the magic. So what's going to happen is your website will be running um, the application will be running in the um, in the device and then what it's pointing to your website so changes to the website will be live reloaded onto your device all right um, it's now fired up um, Xcode for me and we're gonna hop into our uh, simulator so we have our simulator spinning up and now the app is open and you can see it's running so now we're gonna check out the live reload I'm gonna make some minor modifications to the file um, and you should see them getting updated immediately. I have to admit this whole you know process is way smoother than I imagine. Um, I played with React Native before. This is in my opinion much cleaner than React Native. Um, but you know you you check it out on your own and you tell me what you think. But um, let's see a couple of a couple of command lines and basic web technology I have running in my mobile device right now. So here I am just uh, made a minor change to the title. So you saw that it just recompiled and updated it on device. So let's, uh, yeah, let's change the name. See that? Boom. Easy, easy, as they say, easy peasy. Let's clean up some stuff you don't need. All right, now, um, another cool thing, there's a couple of plugins that come by default with Capacitor. We're gonna use the uh, geolocation plugin to get the, well, in this case, the simulated location um, from the plugin and just render it on device. Once again, as you can see, uh, I'm not, I don't have to enter more, any more commands. It's just with live reload going, once I modify um, the HTML code, in this case, the React code, it will recompile and push. So there you see the change, I've changed the text. It appeared in my on my device. Now let's kind of just put a little bit of padding around the outside of this to kind of clean it up a little bit. And, you know, just see how, it, what just really is amazing is just how quickly it all just works. And, you know, when you're trying to add values to a client project, you just want your stuff to just work. So let's um, load in a couple of, eh, not a couple, let's just load in one plugin. So I'm going to, and you get the, you get the basic plugins from Capacitor Core. I know that geolocation is one of the default plugins, so I don't need to check out the directory, but I strongly, not the directory, the documentation, I strongly recommend you check out the doc to find what other ones come out of the box. So there's our geolocation. Um, the TypeScript is nice, so it, gives me a clear understanding of um, what functions are available, a combination of the TypeScript uh, with the IntelliSense from Visual Studio Code. We're gonna use use effects. So um, when the component is mounted, it will call my, uh, uh, when the component is mounted, it will call my get location function, which I'm about to create here. Um, and then we're going to um, use the use state so when I make my asynchronous call to get the location, I will uh, call the set location function, which will um, force the component to re-render and the component will re-render and write out the location of the device. But as I said, we're in a simulator, so I believe it's gonna just give us the Apple location because that's usually what it does in this situation. Um, since most of these plugins are uh, return promises, we're going to use the async await here to get the location. So with the geolocation, get current position. Um, we return the location, and then we're going to use the set location 
uh, along with DU state to uh, uh, modify the state, which will cause the application to re-render. All right, so we have a set location, and let's just drop it in our use effects. Gets dropped in there. Uh, it's got to be annoying to see me <laughs> always reformat my code. I just like everything to be nice and clean. All right, now just use some more of the IntelliSense. We're going to use another, let's use an ion item, no, a label. And then we'll use a JSON stringify to take the object that we get returned and just print it in into in plain text so that we can read it. The, the whole purpose here is just showing you how quickly it's integrated, how smooth everything works with the CLI, um, so that you can try it for yourself. All right, it's integrated. We have my location and it's rendered location. Oh, and if you notice, we still have not had to type in any more commands. It's all just compiling, reloading, and pushing properly to the uh, device, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Okay. Um, next up, let's add a little bit. Let's clean this up a bit with this um, with your with your built-in style uh, utility classes that you get. This ion text wrap, so we get it nicely wrapped. All right, and then now the big thing that everyone always I see people struggle with is just the ability to debug on device. I mean, it's live reloaded. Um, it's your web code. So what we do for um, iOS, we just open up Safari. As you can see, we have access to the web application running on device. Uh, you notice I dropped the breakpoint. So when I reload here, we should hit my breakpoint. My breakpoint's hit. We stopped inside of my code. Uh, you can see on the right, we can look at the ver we can inspect variables. We can step through the code if we want to. And I'm expecting eh, inspecting variables. Um, the code's not mangled or anything like that. No messing around with source maps. It just effing works, um, which is amazing. So that's uh, pretty much what we got. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, please make sure you like and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Bye.